You probably already know that there are different kinds of maintenance. Reactive, proactive, preventative, condition-based. You probably heard a bunch of these terms. But how exactly do they relate to lubricants and lubrication? Let's find out. This is the P to F curve of machine failure. It's probably something that you're familiar with. The idea is that a machine is operating at a certain level of usefulness. And then at some stage, we have a problem event P, right? Which causes a degradation in usefulness, which eventually leads to a functional failure F. We can use the P to F curve as a lens to understand the different types of maintenance. Now, broadly speaking, there are four different kinds of maintenance. Reactive, preventative, predictive, and proactive. And sometimes they're given slightly different names. I like to give these much easier definitions. So reactive is what we call fix it when it breaks. When it comes to the P to F curve, we're operating at the very right hand side of the curve. Now the downside for this is that the repair cost of the equipment usually goes up towards the right hand side of the curve. So in the case of reactive maintenance, most of the time we're having to replace either the part or the entire asset because of the failure. Then we move on to preventative maintenance. And the definition there could be, I fix it at predetermined intervals. So an example would be, we do an inspection and let's say an oil change on fixed kilometers or fixed oil hours. Now, in this instance, we're typically operating most of the time before the problem of event, but also through the problem event. The danger of doing maintenance this way is that there are actually such things as maintenance induced failures. So for example, maybe our asset would have performed perfectly well had we just not touched it, right? But by opening up the asset, and by doing maintenance, we might install something incorrectly, or we may introduce a contaminant, and that actually causes a failure of the object. Then we have predictive maintenance. This is where we're saying we're gonna fix the problem when we actually sense it. So on the P to F curve, what we would say is that after a problem P occurs, we have multiple opportunities to try and identify what that problem is before the failure actually occurs. So in condition monitoring, for example, we might be able to sense changes in vibration with vibration analysis. We might be able to observe where debris in the oil through oil analysis. We might be able to detect a change in the infrared signature. Maybe as the problem gets worse, we can actually hear the noise as in the case of cavitation or micro dieseling, or eventually the item is gonna become hot to the touch. So that's predictive maintenance, fixing it when the problem is sensed. And we are operating typically in the time between P and F. So we're trying to catch that failure before it happens. And then finally, we have proactive or condition-based maintenance where we're saying, fix the root cause of the problem event. So what we're trying to do here is actually intervene well before a problem ever occurs. Now, what would that look like in the case of lubrication? In the case of lubrication, for example, we know for a fact that contamination is the root cause of many machine failures. So how do we prevent contamination? Through filtration. So ensuring that clean oil is going into the asset at all the times. So doing that is an example of proactive maintenance. So we now have these kind of four broad definitions, reactive, preventative, predictive, and proactive. Maybe it's helpful to give another analogy. Often we say that lubricant is like the lifeblood of the asset. And that's actually a really, really good analogy. Let's say, for example, we were talking about heart and blood health. What are some of the proactive steps that you would take to ensure that you are going to have a healthy heart? Well, proactively, you would say you are going to eat a healthy diet. So what goes into your body is always optimal. Now let's think about this in an oil context. What does that mean? It means that we are always putting the correct lubricant into the asset. It means that we are always filtering the lubricant into the asset and making sure that it's clean, cool, and dry. That would be an example of proactive use of lubricants. Then we get into predictive. So if you wanted to predict the condition of your heart, maybe you go for blood testing. You test glucose levels, you cl test cholesterol levels would be a good example. Now, what is the analog in the lubricants world? Us doing oil analysis and oil testing. We're able to look at wear parameters, contamination parameters, things like oxidation and nitration, for example, and we're able to identify, is there a problem that is emerging and can we take some steps to fix it? Then we've got preventative maintenance. Theoretically, if I wanted to ensure that I have low cholesterol, I could go for open heart surgery on a predetermined interval. So every year I go in and I have a doctor open me up and he cleans out my arteries. 
Now, what is the risk of doing that? Maintenance-induced failures. Open heart surgery is dangerous and potentially I would die because I'm over maintaining my heart, right? I'm doing surgeries that are not required. Exactly the same thing with oil. If we're just changing oil on a routine interval and without doing it as a condition-based approach, maybe by opening up the reservoir or by opening up the sump, we are introducing contaminants that otherwise wouldn't have been introduced into the system. And then finally, you've got reactive maintenance, which in the case of heart health is just trying to restart the heart. In the case of lubricants, is just trying to restart or replace the asset.